Hi there, my name is Mark and I am Movie Draft's creator. So let's take a look at Movie Draft. Now, this is the screen you'll see when you first start Movie Draft. As you can see, it's very clean and uncluttered, and there are three components to Movie Draft. On the left here, we have the scene list. At the top is the toolbar, and center stage is the WYSIWYG editor. Now, for those who don't know, WYSIWYG stands for What You See Is What You Get, meaning that whatever you see on screen is how it will be when it's printed. OK, so let's go to the Help menu to open up the example file so we have some text to work with. OK, so let's look at these three main components in more detail. Let's start with the scene list. Let me just zoom in here so you can see. Now, the scene list creates, as its name suggests, a list of all your scenes. Uh, you can navigate your scenes by clicking on them. And there you can see that the scenes are changing. Uh, you can drag and drop your scenes anywhere you want. You can duplicate your scenes, and if I click duplicate this scene, this creates a carbon copy of that scene, and there it is there. Now, the great feature is the ability to hide scenes. So if I hide this scene, it's now disappeared from the editor, but it's not deleted. Now, this is a brilliant way for you to create as many variations of your scenes as you like, and just hide the ones you don't want for the time being. You can always show them again at a later date, so no work gets lost. To give your scenes a visual cue, you can assign icons to them. Simply right click on any scene, let's use this one, as this one doesn't have one, and click change icon. The change icon window appears, and you can choose from over 200 built in icons. Um, the icons are grouped by category to make them easier to find, so if I wanted to say find a floppy disk icon, I'd probably look and um, science and technology, and there we have it floppy disk. Now uh, you can of course view all the icons in all groups at the same time, there's quite a few there, and if you so wish you can add your own icon. Also in the scene list you can group your scenes into acts, as you can see here, this is act one. Uh, these acts can be dragged and dropped in the same way as scenes, I'll just move my act to there, there you go, and if you collapse an act, the text in the editor changes to grey so that you know you're not working in that act. You see these are greyed out. And finally, you can give your scene a friendly title. Let me just zoom in again. And some notes. Go to the scene details. Let me just type this is my new scene. And here are some notes. Notes are very useful for when you return to a script after a period of time and the scene notes also appear in the editor as a little yellow icon next to the scene heading. You can of course undo and redo all your changes easily and simply. Now, with a scene list able to hold so much information, you can customize the scene list. Let me get down to the bottom here. If you click on the cog button at the bottom, you'll see these options. So, let's say I don't want any icons. I'll just turn that off. Maybe I don't want to show the scene numbers. You can see the scene number next to the friendly name here. I'll turn that off. And you can change the height of the notes displayed. Let's have the default note height, or maybe you don't want any notes. We'll turn those off. And if it was a particularly large screenplay, you'd have many scenes in here, so you might want to have small rows to make it more efficient. So we've customized the scene list, and this customization, <laughs> customization is stored along with your project, so each project can have a different look. So let's stick with the scene list toolbar. Let's go back in there and zoom in. Now, next to the little cog icon is the index card button. Now, if you click on this icon, you'll see your scenes as index cards. You can see there's my hidden scene as a crumpled bit of card there, just so you know it's hidden. Now, as with the previous view, you can still drag around your scenes in the same way, and your acts. But unlike the previous view, index cards show a preview of the text written in the script, and not the scene notes. This gives you a mini version of your script in bite-sized chunks. 
and click on the icon again to exit index card view. Next to the index card view button, let me zoom in again, is a small display. This display consists of two running times. The current scene running time here and the total running time of your entire script here. Now that little display is called scene time. Let me zoom out here. So as you can see at the moment, the total running time is 9 minutes 52. Now if I hide this scene, the running time has changed. So if you want to know how long your scene is, you don't need to count pages anymore. Let's just make these bigger so we can actually see them down the bottom here. There we are. Um, you just need to click on your scene and look at the scene time. As you can see, this current scene is 4 minutes 42 seconds. This one here is 33 seconds, and so on. And speaking of running times, you'll notice that the act also has a running time. Now, this running time <clears throat> shows you the total duration of all the scenes within that act. So in this act here, it's 7 minutes 17 seconds. This one is zero, because that's hidden, so let me show it. And now it's 49 seconds. As you can see down the bottom here, 49 seconds. And the very last thing about the scene list is the little drag handle to the side. Now, this allows you to resize the scene list width to the size you want. And again, this is stored along with your project. So if you're outlining, you may want it to be a bit bigger. But if you're writing, you might want it, a little be, a little, might want it to be a little bit smaller. So that's it for the scene list for now. Let's move on to the toolbar. Okay, let's zoom in here. Now as you can see, there aren't that many buttons on the toolbar. This is intentional as the whole ethos behind MovieDraft was to create a clean and uncluttered... Uncluttered? Um, yes, clean and uncluttered environment. So over on the left we have the usual open and save buttons. And to the right of these are the scene group buttons. The first button, Scenes, is used to hide or show the scene list we just saw. Let me zoom out so you can see what happens. There we are. The second bu <coughs> button, Single, puts Movie Draft into single scene mode. Well, what's single scene mode I hear you ask? Well, let's press it and see. Let's zoom out. Now, as I navigate between my scenes, you'll notice that only one scene is shown in the editor. This is Movie Draft's most powerful feature. Single scene mode allows you to write in a completely new way, in a non-linear way. If you wanted to write the last few scenes first, no problem. Click on the scene if, uh, that you want to write, and you'll have no distractions from any other scene. I won't go into too much detail about uh, single scene mode here, as you can check that out in How to Outline Your Script video, which goes into great depth as to why this will change your writing for the better. So moving on, the next buttons in the toolbar are the previous and next buttons. Now, these navigate your scenes up or down, and they're useful if you have the scene list hidden, especially when you're in single scene mode. But they work for full mode also. Okay, so smack bang in the middle of the toolbar is a display. On the left hand side there are two icons, one for tab and one for enter. These icons display what element you'll get to next if you either press the tab or enter key. Now, <clears throat> see the Write Your Screenplay Quickly video for more information about how to use the tab and enter keys. Now, uh, in the middle of the display is the title of your script. Below it on the left is a status and below it on the right is which scene element you're currently in. So currently we're in a scene heading. If I click on there, now we're in dialogue, character, and so forth. Actually clicking on this display allows you to change this information. So if I change this, and I can also turn off showing what element we're currently in, if I so wanted. Now to the right of the display, uh, the pages and scenes count information. The pages information is telling us that we're on page 2 of 10 in total. The scenes information is telling us that we're on scene 3 of 10 in total. 
When in single scene mode, the total pages information changes to display how many pages are in that actual scene as opposed to the entire script. To the right of the display are the final three buttons. The keys button allows you to change how movie draft behaves when you press the tab or enter keys. So if you previously used final draft or movie magic, you can choose the tab and enter key combinations that you're most familiar with. You'll notice the editor is in colour. This is because colour highlighting is enabled. You can toggle this on and off with the highlight button. But for gauging the proportion of text between action and dialogue, um, it's invaluable to keep it switched on. Now the final um, button is the full view button. Let me just zoom out so you can see this. Pressing this button puts movie draft into full screen mode. Now when you are in full screen mode, you can still access the scene list by hovering over the left side of the screen. And you can still navigate your scenes in exactly the same way. And to exit full screen mode, just press the escape key. So moving on to the editor. Now in combination with the scene list, let's open it back up, and the toolbars display, this is where you'll be spending most of your time. As I mentioned previously, what you see is what you get in the editor. The only thing you'll need to do is to ensure that you pick the right paper size if you are in Europe. Just click use A4 instead of letter, as it's letter by default. Now whilst we're in the preferences window you'll see that there are other options for the editor as well such as capitalize sentences, add page numbers, add mores or continues, etc. Just set those to your own writing style. Now as mentioned previously, adding notes to the scene list here uh, will also create a little yellow note icon in the scene heading here. Now hovering over this icon, like so, will reveal the note without you having to click away from writing. Additionally, you may add notes to any paragraph you like simply by right-clicking on the paragraph and choosing Add Note. So let's add one here. Add Note. There you go, I've added a note to a dialogue element. So let's create a new project so we can see Movie Draft's autocomplete mechanism. Do I want to save changes? No. Now here's a prompt. When you create a new project from an already open project, you'll get a prompt asking if you want to clear the characters or locations lists. Now this is useful if you want to keep the characters or locations if you're writing episodes or something and they share common characters and locations. For now I'll click yes to clear them as I don't want to copy them over. Okay. So now that we have a new project, let's write a scene heading. Let me zoom in here. Okay. Now in Movie Draft, there are two types of autocomplete. One which displays inline on your screen, and the other which pops up choices for you to pick. For inline, press the letter I for int, and you'll see the int displayed in the autocomplete. Press tab to accept it. Now I'll just write a new location. I'll press tab again, and then I'll press the letter D for day, and there it is. Press tab again, and there you are. You have a full scene heading created. So let's do that again, but this time with a choices pop-up way of working. Let me undo all of that. Okay. So this time I'm not going to type anything. I'm just going to press the Enter key. As you can see, I get a choice. I'll select that. Type in my location. Again, press the Enter key. And pick which one I want. Of course, once you've entered in a location once, it's even quicker to use autocomplete as Movie Draft will remember the location for you. So let's create a new scene and do that one again. Int tab M for my location, tab D for day, tab done. Similarly, we could do the same. Enter. A location pops up this time because we've already entered it. And done. So the last thing I'm going to show you uh, in the editor is page styles. Now you can customize, along with the scene list, you can customize how the page looks by going to the view menu, Hang on, let me zoom in, and clicking page style. At the moment we have a page style of white, it could be simple, or subdued, as you can see it all changes. I hope you enjoyed this video, my name is Mark, look out for our other videos.